Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Equine Essentials. I'm your host, Gray Parks, Sales Specialist for Protrition Feed. And tonight, I am here to talk with you about feeding hard keepers. Uh, we are going to discuss um, what can make a horse a hard keeper, some things to check that might be causing your horse that would not normally be difficult to keep weight on to become that way, and how we can feed horses with hard keeping tendencies to help maintain a healthy body condition. So with that, I am going to start tonight's presentation with you. Um, I'd like to remind you all, as usual, this is a pre-recorded video. So I um, have made this video. I'm actually going to be out of town as you're watching this one. Usually I'm here with you to answer questions. But rest assured, we have people standing by to answer your questions. And at the end, we will provide my email address so that you can reach out to me afterwards. Uh, and I will be able to get back to you with any questions that you have. So tonight, starting off our presentation, we've got an image that's very familiar to those of you who own hard keepers. So horses that, despite the fact that they're eating roughly the same as other horses of the same age, size, um, and condition or use tend to be more difficult to keep weight on. Um, in this particular photo, we have a young growing horse, a two-year-old, um, who was just a little bit difficult to maintain weight as she was going through her growthy stages. We're going to talk about some other types of horses as well who might be difficult keepers. Um, so there are some things that horses go through naturally or that we put horses through that tend to make them have very high calorie needs. And so these horses need a lot of high quality food to maintain good body condition. And the first is a horse in heavy or very heavy work. Um, now, a lot of us would like to think that our horses and ourselves are in heavy work, um, but the truth is that very few horses really fall into this classification. Heavy and very heavy work would apply to horses that are actively in training to be racehorses or are racing, um, high level eventing horses, elite level endurance horses that are doing 50 and 100 mile races regularly, that type of thing. So your average show horse, performance horse, pleasure horse, um, or trail horse will not necessarily fall into this particular category. Another very, very common instance where we see horses um, present weight challenges are lactating broodmares. Um, it is very, very difficult to feed a good broodmare um, enough food to keep her from losing any weight while she's nursing. Um, and in fact, very good broodmares are often like very good dairy cows. The more you feed them, the more milk they produce, but they don't necessarily put on additional weight. So for those horses, we wanna make sure they're in good body condition going into each foaling because we know that we're gonna have minimal chances to add weight to that mare while she's nursing. And then growth can sometimes make a horse a hard keeper, not necessarily due to the total quantities that, of calories that a horse needs to grow, but because a young horse is so much smaller um, than it will be as an adult, its capacity to eat a lot of food is much lower than an adult horse. So for example, your typical weanling to yearling growing horse has a calorie requirement that's very similar to an adult horse in moderate work. But um, that growing horse only has the internal capacity to consume about half the, half the total food that it will as an adult. So we have to get just as much energy and just as much nutrition in a much smaller amount of food. And then senior horses often have increased calorie requirements as well. Um, they become less efficient digestively as they age. And so even older horses that were very easy to keep weight on when they were young might become difficult with age. Then there are individual differences in metabolism. Just like people, every horse has its own particular requirements. Um, they don't all read the textbooks and some of them just require more calories than others. So any of these horses might fall into a category that we call hard keepers. And when you have a horse that's a hard keeper, um, especially a horse that has not been a hard keeper in the past and is now one, the first thing you should do is call your veterinarian. Um, before we talk about feed, we want to make sure the horse is healthy and there's not a reason for that horse to be losing weight. So your veterinarian will likely do a physical exam, check your horse's teeth to ensure that it is chewing its food properly. 
It's the first step in digestion and a horse with dental issues is going to likely have some issues with absorbing nutrients, including calories from its diet. Um, your vet may suggest a fecal egg count to check for parasites, um, even if the horse has been on a regular deworming schedule in case you have a drug resistance issue going on with your horse's parasites. Um, this is unlikely to be the reason for weight loss in an adult horse. This is going to be a much more common issue in young horses, but it's always good to be on the safe side and have that checked. Um, your vet may indicate that some blood work needs to be done to check your horse's health. For example, the horse in this particular photograph, who you can tell is not extremely thin, but definitely a little bit on the light side, um, was a uh, suffering from Cushing's disease, which is very, very common in older horses and often does cause weight loss, especially top line muscle wasting in the horse. So any horse that is in its teens and exhibiting weight loss, this is one of the things that you want to have on your list of items to check before you start making radical changes in its diet. And then we always want to be concerned about gastric ulcers when it comes to weight loss in horses or really with almost anything that we do with horses. The vast majority of horses have ulcers. Um, they don't always cause a problem, but they can. So your vet might suggest um, a scope, an endoscope to check your horse for ulcers or a treatment course um, to address ulcers that are existing in the horse. And then we'll talk about some products at the end of this presentation that you can use to help prevent those issues from reoccurring or occurring in the first place in your horse. So the very next thing we wanna do is start looking at the diet of your horse. And with a horse's diet, um, although I'm here talking to you on behalf of a feed company, we always wanna start with the forage. Um, horses are grazing animals and they are designed to consume forage on essentially a free choice basis. And anything we do that restricts the amount of hay the horse can eat or grass um, is less than ideal unless we have a really good reason to do so. So when it comes to hard keepers in particular, we're concerned about both the quantity and quality of that horse's forage. Very often, um, quality is the bigger concern. We wanna make sure we're looking at both. On a quality side, we want a hay for a hard keeper that is less mature, so less stemmy, more leaf material, more vegetative in nature. Um, this forage is going to be both more palatable and more nutrient dense, which means that the horse is going to hopefully consume more of it and get more out benefit out of what it's eating. Um, in particular, um, I like to see alfalfa added as about 20 to 30 percent um, of the hay ration for the vast majority of horses. Alfalfa is uh, something of a wonder plant when it comes to equine nutrition, and most horses just do better with alfalfa in their diet. With hard keepers, that's particularly useful because alfalfa tends to be very, very palatable, um, and so the horse generally likes that. Um, in this case, in this photograph, you can see um, a slow feed hay net, which might sound counterproductive with a hard keeper, but actually can be very helpful um, in preventing wastage. It seems that our hard keepers are often also our very, very picky horses, um, and they may not want to eat any hay that has fallen on the ground and is now contaminated. Um, so using a small feed hay net or other slow feeder can help to encourage the horse to eat uh, more and waste less of its hay. When it comes to adding alfalfa to the diet, um, from a nutritional standpoint, hay, cubes, and pellets are more or less interchangeable, um, but my strong preference is to add that alfalfa as hay, if at all possible, um, followed by cubes and then pellets um, as the least ideal of that. You really want to increase the horse's chew time, especially if we're worried about a horse that might have ulcers. And it takes a horse a lot longer to chew hay versus cubes versus pellets. And that's gonna increase buffering via saliva production and also the horse's um, general contentment and happiness with life. With quantity, um, free choice is really preferred for every horse, but especially for our hard keepers. We want hay in front of that horse all the time. And most horses in that scenario of free choice access are going to eat somewhere between two and two and a half percent of their body weight every day. So for your average 1200 pound horse, that'd be 24 to 30 pounds of hay per day, um, which is about half of a typical small square bale of hay for reference point there. 
So if you have a hard keeper and you're wondering if that horse is getting enough hay, kind of use that as your gauge for where, where you are on the amount of hay for that horse's diet. Next, um, we're gonna look at the concentrate. This comes after the hay. Um, so we wanna choose a high calorie, high quality balanced concentrate for those hard keeper horses. And that's important because we wanna make sure that along with that high calorie or energy intake, we're also providing a high nutrient diet because often our hard keepers have elevated requirements for all nutrients, protein, vitamins, and minerals, not just calories. We wanna make sure we're meeting all of those needs. So for example, amongst our protrition lines of products, you have multiple options for these types of horses. If you have a breeding or growing horse, for example, a lactating mare or a young growing horse that is difficult to keep weight on, then um, Pinnacle 1400 plus, um, Triple Crown Growth or Purina Ultium Growth are all high calorie options in those types of feeds. For our senior horses, Purina Equine Senior Active, provided the horse can still chew hay. Um, Pinnacle 1400 plus or Triple Crown Senior Gold are some of our higher calorie senior horse options. And then for performance horses, we have a variety of options. Some of my favorites when it comes to feeding a high calorie or hard keeping performance horse are Pinnacle 1400 plus, the Purina Ultium Competition or Gastric Care Formulas, Purina Omeline 500, Pinnacle 1200 High Fat, Triple Crown Complete, and Triple Crown Perform Gold. So whether your preference is for a textured feed, a pelleted feed, um, whether you have growing horses, senior horses, performance horses, or all of the above, we've got an option for you when it comes to a hard keeping horse. High quality, high calorie, palatable feeds to meet your hard keepers nutrient requirements. Sometimes though, that's just not quite enough. And we might need to add additions to the horse's diet, even with high quality forage, even with a high quality feed, we might need to still provide more for that horse. So that's where supplements come into play. Supplements do not take the place of a quality diet, um, but rather they're used to help enhance a quality diet. Sorry guys, I'm falling off my chair. Um, so what can we do for these types of horses? Well, there are three things we might wanna look at when it comes to supplementing the diet of um, a hard keeping horse. One is just plain adding calories, adding additional energy to that horse's diet. And fat is going to be the most efficient way to do that. Hard keepers, um, we may already be feeding them as much volume or close to as much volume as they're willing to eat. And fat gives us a really calorie dense way of adding calories into that horse's diet. So for example, our Pinnacle Energy Plus or Purina Amplify supplements provide highly palatable extruded, which is similar to pelleted type products that we can add a lot of high quality calories to that horse's diet. We talked about ulcers. Um, even if your hard keeper um, has been treated um, or doesn't have ulcers, you still want to protect his gastric health. And that's where gastric buffer products come into play. Um, we have both Purina Outlast and Pinnacle Gastrotech as excellent options for protecting your horse's gastric health, provided you're not already feeding a product that has a gastric buffer included. Those Purina products that we talked about, the Ultium line, um, senior Active, Omeline 500, those all already have Outlast included. So provided you're feeding um, at the appropriate rate, you're covered there. But if you're feeding a different feed, then you might want to consider adding and top dressing a gastric health product. And additionally, remember I said that hard keepers don't just require more calories, they require more nutrition. Um, you might need um, in many circumstances, especially with performance horses, to consider increasing the protein quality in the horse's diet, especially if you cannot get alfalfa hay or the horse can't or won't eat alfalfa hay. Um, Purina Super Sport is a great way to add quality amino acids to your horse's diet to support muscle health, especially top line development in those hard keeping performance horses. So we provided our horse with plenty of forage, a high quality, high calorie concentrate and appropriate supplementation um, provided there's no underlying health condition, should help keep your hard keeper in a much better body condition. Um, I hope you found this presentation helpful. Again, if you have questions, please feel free to ask those right now. I've got people on standby to answer them for you. Or you can reach out to me directly at gray.parks at protritionfeed.com. 
and I will get back with you just as soon as I can. Thank you all for joining me here on Equine Essentials. Um, I hope to see you again next month.